This is the Cybex VR3 abdominal machine. We have this piece of equipment in both of the facilities I work from. I made this video because I see the majority of people using it incorrectly. So here I'm demonstrating what I usually see. Now the handles are a bit misleading because they suggest push me as far as you can, and they'll definitely go there. When we break down the movement, you'll notice that my trunk stays relatively neutral, meaning the majority of the motion comes from hip flexion with minimal trunk flexion. As my legs are fixed in place, my torso gets closer to them. Here's the motion when I fix my trunk and move just one leg through hip flexion. Now performing the exercise like this will definitely stimulate the abdominals, just as holding a dumbbell like this stimulates the biceps and other elbow flexors. But if you require strength at different muscle lengths, end range joint control, or you're looking to maximize muscle growth, we should look to challenge the muscles at a variety of lengths. The instructions list the motion developed as trunk flexion and the muscles involved as rectus abdominis, more commonly referred to as the abdominals or the abs for short, and the internal and external obliques. If I use a rubber band to map the rectus abdominis on the right hand side of my body, we see it attaches from ribs five to seven, the xiphoid process, and runs down to the pubic crest on the pelvis. Note the lack of length change when I perform hip flexion and extension, and then the shortening and lengthening of the muscle that occurs with trunk flexion and extension. Set the foot rest at a height that keeps a slight bend in your knees. Push your pelvis back into the seat. Be aware of where your seat bones are at this point. Your pelvis should remain still and your knee angle shouldn't change. I suggest you initially practice trunk flexion from a neutral position without the handles, then with your hands out. Finally, use the input arms. Note the short distance that the hands travel at this point. To determine how far back to go, it's possible to use your biceps and other elbow flexors to resist you as you move back into extension. Be a little cautious here, leaving some end range as a buffer. Find a comfortable shoulder position and keep your elbows straight throughout. We don't want to feel our arms or shoulders fatiguing whilst we're training our torso. Here are a few final tips. Don't get caught up in the distance that the handles travel, especially from a neutral to fully flexed position. If in doubt, check the picture on the machine that shows the finishing position. Your head should travel with the rest of your body throughout the movement. Bringing the head down in the crunched position will challenge muscles in the back of the neck and actually assist the movement by shifting your center of mass forwards. Move with control, own the end ranges. Some form of back extension exercise might be an idea beforehand to gauge your end range extension. If you've already been using this machine, you probably have to go with a lighter weight than you used to. In spite of this, performing the movement correctly will provide a greater stimulus to the muscles we're trying to affect.